Hello and welcome to Women in Sports blog interviews to honor incredible women in sports all around the world. And today I have a huge pleasure to speak with Tanil Hoogland and Jamaica Hansen, who are two incredible individuals. And I'm going to introduce uh, Tanil first. Uh, she was my first Ironman coach when I started uh, working towards or training towards my first Ironman, which was so scary. And I'm forever grateful for Tanil's expert guidance and making me believe in myself the way I wasn't able to. <laughs> so Tanil's Hoogland's mission is to transform how female athletes experience sport and reach lifelong health and athletic excellence. Despite her stellar athletic career, first as a synchronized swimmer, then professional triathlete, representing Canada in various championships, the toll of training resulted in disordered eating, a five-year loss of her periods, and a decline in mental well-being, prompting her retirement in 2013. Overcoming fertility challenges and rediscovering joy, joy in movement and sports, Tanil developed the mindset, nutrition, training, and recovery integrated training system. This evidence-based system empowers female athletes, guiding them through the physiological life stages from adolescence to post-menopause to establish a foundation for excellence, performance, and resilience. Professionally re recognized for her leadership in um, leadership roles in the sports industry, Tanil now coaches female athletes in perimenopause and beyond through Tanil Hoogland Applied Athletics. She leads the Element Race team, aiming to boost women's participation in cycling events. Tanil remains fit and strong, teaching online spin sessions, participating in races with her team, and running after her two young sons. Embracing curiosity, education, and trial and error, Tanil embodies a holistic approach to well-being and excellence in sports. I love her motto, which is health is the foundation of performance. And I love this one even more, her favorite quote, between the stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space lies our freedom and power to choose our responses. <clears throat> in our response lies our growth and our freedom. And this quote is by Viktor Frankl in 1964. Mm. Welcome, Tanil. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what a story, <laughs> mate. I had yeah. here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Mm. And we also welcome Jamaica Hansen, who is originally from Wyoming, is deeply rooted in southern Utah, where she and her husband run an electrical contracting business. I actually met Jamaica uh, at the World Championships uh, in 70.3 Ironman. And wow, what a person, warm-hearted, welcoming um, woman she is. And I'm so excited to, to talk to her and uh, find more about the events that she's run. She is an avid sports enthusiast. Jamaica began her triathlon journey in 2006 eventually becoming a dedicated volunteer and receiving the Volunteer Captain of the Year Award in 2012. It was an Ironman event, right? Yeah. Despite declining the race director position for St. George Ironman in 2023 to focus on her role as a stay-at-home mom, Jamaica spent eight years directing local races, including the Red Mountain 55K trail run and popular family 5K events. <clears throat> Sorry, I might have to take a little tea here to clear my throat. Sorry. Yeah. She also volunteered for, for a decade at the St. George Marathon. Today, Jamaica enjoys outdoor activities with her daughters, exploring new places on their side by side, engaging in cowboy action shooting, playing pickleball. She's a pickleball a champion, by the way and participating in the Ironman events every May. Her diverse interests and contributions highlight her as a dedicated and well-rounded individual in the sports community in St. George, Utah. Welcome, Jamaica. So excited. Um, so I've been, I've been struggling a little bit with the head cold, so hopefully I, don't, I won't lose my voice, but um, if I do, 
uh, you guys just go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, take it over. <laughs> uh, I'd like to have a conversation with both of you about your roles and experiences in organizing events in triathlon and running through the lens of motherhood and womanhood. So how is it to be a woman organizing events that are designed for men by men? And how are you and how would you change things if you had a magical wand? Tanil, do you want to go first? Well, it's interesting because I, I in, in thinking about this question, I haven't, um, when I was doing race directing for Ironman, um, it was, or I was a, an assistant race director. The model was a little bit different as I was part of a transition of when Ironman had purchased the um, Ironman Victoria 70.3 event. I didn't have kids. And I had recently retired from being a professional athlete. And my experience, it was an incredible experience of seeing the other side and um, of, of how hard the the crew worked like it was mind blowing at how hard the crews work and how much reliance there was on the volunteers um to actually make the event happen and i don't think i had as an athlete an appreciation for that the mm -hmm. hours the very very long hours that um are expected at least at that point in time. So this is going back a number of years, but um, it was very difficult. And I don't know, I can understand why Jamaica made the under, the, the decision because there's not um, the decision not to take on that race director role because with two kids, I don't know how I've been asked as well to take on leadership roles as a race director for various events since then. And I've always declined. Because I just it as as my priorities are are just what they are for my kids and I to meet the demands, the incredible physical demands, and then the time demands. It, I I don't know. I don't I I don't. It wasn't it wasn't a decision I was able to move forward with. So I guess mm -hmm. that is my decision. Yeah. Yeah. I am gonna cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> that validation to nail because it's something that I love and it's I mean I guess that's the thing as a woman is you have to make those choices and that's the hard thing and I don't you know I mean it's just a choice I had to make and I think part of me is that you know we have our own business here and I help my husband a lot too we're a team and those things come first and so you know maybe if it was a race this was our local race so I'm here and on the daily, as I'm waiting for my kids to get out of school and stuff, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could be doing this and, and going back and forth and back and forth. And then race week comes and I'm so glad that I didn't, <laughs> that I've said no, but um, yeah, I think there is some sacrifice that we have to make as women. I don't want to call it sacrifice. There's just a choice. Mm -hmm. I work with a lot of things in that, in that regard too. And I remember asking one, um, at a big event that she was in charge of, I said, do you have kids? And she's like, no, oh my gosh, I couldn't do this with kids. I mean, she knew the reality of it and it is, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hours and stuff and, and everybody does it because they love it. And there's a million different things that we love about it, but I'm just glad to be here. Um, one of your questions was what motivated you to take on mm -hmm. doing this? Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, I'd rather be in the arena than on the sidelines. And I've been very blessed to kind of choose and work my way into where I want to be. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what, Tanil, can you answer the same question? What motivated you to take a, a role as a race organizer? Um. I think that it was, try I mean, I was trying to make a living. <laughs> I think part yeah. of it was the skill set. Um, I had, evidently I had been, I mean, I'd been on the other side for, I, I mean, I had a, de a degree or a cert certification in project management from Railroads University. 
Um, so I really was a project oriented person. I mean, I have such a diverse uh, career from mm -hmm. working for the federal government, like just I'm very plan oriented. So it logistics and taking and what I know about racing and then into all right now let's do the other side and like let's plan it um it was uh, something that was really fun for me so what motivated me was being being seeing the other side actually it was being part of this team I have to say that my experience of Iron Man was amazing I as a female working within this team I loved the team. I loved the leadership. I loved who I got to work with. I loved the drive. I loved like just the things that Jamaica is talking about. Um, I never felt like I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I there was, yeah. I think that there's a real testament to that. I think that there's a real testament. You know, we hear a lot of things about, uh, you know, in either the the branding or whatever it is. And I can only say from my experience, I, I, I loved it. And I do recognize that it's definitely a choice. Like, I, I don't think it's, I think it's entirely possible for women. This is going off your, your question a little bit, but I just want to say, I think it's entirely possible for a woman or a female to take on the leadership role as a mom. I can say that. I think that you, we all make choices and priorities and decisions based on our whole family dynamic and how we show up. And I think that those choices are um, influenced by, yes, our cultural upbringing, our, your, our culture just period and the demands that we, we bring on ourselves of like, I couldn't do it if I, you know, like the, the guilt, the mom guilt of like mm -hmm. all those things. I think those absolutely influence but if I would try to tease it away and be like, no, I'm still making the choice because I had an experience of um, going with my race team to do, this is when my kids were even a little bit long, uh, younger. And I went and I did some like epic ride. And I came home. I was so tired. And then I was like, I had to show up for my kids and I barely could show up for them. And at that point, I like I couldn't give them the energy that I wanted to give. And I knew at that point that the decisions that I made were going to be on, do I get to show up being the mom I want to be all the time? And yes, they're like that that's gonna shift too. Now am I gonna do some epic races? Yes. Because my kids are a little bit older. They're not as, but, you know, we make these decisions based on just where we're at and it's okay. I, I think what you're saying there is so powerful and uh, it rings rings a bell because I've been there after long rides or long break sessions, I've totally pooped and I have to pick myself up and go to baseball. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> because I, I wouldn't have to. Okay, so that was my choice, right? I chose to go and cheer for my kids. So I suck it up, maybe not perfect recovery for my own training, but uh, I right. I have chosen to support my kids' sports. Um, before the call, Jamaica said something really interesting too. Like if we flip the lens of, okay, we make these choices, whether we want to, take on a leadership role that will eventually take us away from our children for X amount of time. Like in, in, in events situation, we would be gone a lot. Um, but uh, at, uh, Jamaica said something really cool. And she, she said that being a mom also is a benefit for the race organization and yeah, to make it, can you tell me the story that you told me? So I was working a, a Red Bull event out in the middle of the desert and there was, it was a, a team of women that were working all of the administrative stuff <laughs> as it should be, or it never happened. <laughs> but um, I was working with two single ladies and I would, it was a ways out. And so I had a lot of time to just be by myself in the car on the way home. And it was great. And I was thinking when I left one day, wow, so much of my skill set comes from being a mom. Like 
I can delegate. I can make sure everybody else is taken care of. I can keep 18 schedules in my mind. I can do all these things and nothing. All of that came from being a mom. I don't have any professional training in this. I don't have any schooling in that. And it was like, I have not been wasting my time being a mother, hmm. you know, grown. and because no offense to those two, but I was like, you guys need some <laughs> You need to get kids. <laughs> Um, to segue off what you're saying a little bit, um, one of the things that came to mind is that I'm in a place, we had two older kids, we had two kids and then we waited 10 years and we had two more. So I'm in a place now where I have seen my children leave. They're both married and doing wonderful things. And I have two at home and I know what five years having them home is. So that was another thing with me being able to say no pretty easily was no and the 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 uh, leadership above me that was asking me to take over, um, you know, they're like, that's fine if it. We know we realize that it. There are times that it's not the right time, and we'll don't worry, you're awesome. We'll ask you again, and that that helped. Um, but yeah, I know that kids grow up; they don't last forever. And so, I signed up for this, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the race, really. You know, yeah. So. That that is so beautiful. Tanil, can you tell me example of when mother being a mom has helped you as a business owner and uh, organizing events for women? Oh man, um, yeah, I like I totally agree with Jamaica. You learn so much um, being a mom. Um, I think that it it's all the things that Jamaica said. I think the biggest thing that really surprises me about being a mom is just like trying to constantly see the the point of view of like where my like where am I where's my child where's my child coming from because I do not understand the cave brand like the caveman brain here <laughs> like, <laughs> like where are they where's their starting point and I think that it, there's a whole compassion around that right it's like you're, 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 you know, like when you have kids, like they're screaming, they're frustrated, they're, they're whatever, wherever their emotions are at. And you like, I'm constantly trying to be like, okay, where's this coming from? Like, I don't understand yeah. it. I'm trying to figure out how to come into the conversation. How do I reach the person? And you know what? Like, that's pretty a valuable lesson, like, <laughs> way to, like approach most people is like, where are you coming from? Where, like, and in terms of events and like, I think that because events are such high pressure cooker situations, um, like you have, there is time considerations. Like you are on the clock. Like you think, like, you think that you're racing hard. Well, let me tell you, like as a race director, you are just like, you are trying to keep everything going. You're trying to make sure like 18, like schedules, like you have like, like so many things going on from refilling like people don't think about you know the big jugs the water jugs and the like all the little pieces that are constantly scheduled out like revolving volunteer things coming in and do people know what they're talking about the education that like all those logistics and um when when you're in a pressure cooker situation it's like if you can keep your cool and being like, because you come into a lot of situations when you're you're in the leadership positions and you're just like, how did that happen? Right? <laughs> you're just like, what is happening? Like, did they not read the memo? <laughs> right? And so then you're then you're going from there and you're just like, if you like, where would mom like your mom brain come in? It's like, well, how do I approach this person going like they just they just came in? Like, how do you have compassion? Like, how do you put yourself in their shoes? I think that that's one of the things that um, is a really valuable, like the, anything I um, organize now is a lot smaller. It's not big Ironman events. It's very, it's more like International Women's Day cycling rides and that's super fun. Um, but you still use those tools. You still use that way of thinking. Totally use that all the time in your life with, with other people. Yeah. And I know uh, Jamaica has a really good story here that just fits like a hand in a glove here. Take it over, Jamaica. I was out at the out at a out at the lake, kind of removed. Rt one is out of town, and 
there's a little lady out there who has a little business and stuff. And we had brought out a coffee truck and whatnot. So she was mad. She didn't have any signage or anything. I was like, I come out here all the time. I didn't even know you were a business, <laughs> you know, but she started yelling at me and I had to realize she's yelling. She's not yelling at me. She's yelling at the sign on my shirt. You know, I'm the face. I had to be the face that day and I got it and I got in my car and I had a few tears of the shock, you know, and then I got back to town and I went to my meeting and I said, Hey, you guys, this lady's upset and I can see why she's upset and what can we help her out with? You know, and we got her some signage and stuff, but that was my, that was my first like assignment where I was in leadership and I was like, wow. And like you said, everybody was so supportive. Like they've all been there too. And so they all patted me on the back and said, <laughs> good job. <laughs> felt in, I felt initiated that day. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you definitely, it, yeah. I, 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 in life, I'm glad I've had those experiences. Um, it helps in other, you know, I can come home and I can see it from my kids too. And I mean, vice versa, they help each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is so powerful. I, I totally agree. Like understanding when kids are, you know, having a, a tantrum or they are angry or hungry and they, they, they're misbehaving uh, my kids are 9, 12, and 13, and my youngest is very emotional. He, he's he's a hyperactive kid, always on the go. But some day, like he's usually happy, but some days uh, everything just seems like it's a mad, you know, mad day. And yesterday was one of those. So I am trying to figure out, like I'm listening to him, and I'm trying to figure out where is this coming from? Is he getting sick? Uh, you know, is he hungry? How was his nutrition today? <laughs> and uh, I think that's part of motherhood and parenthood. And, you know, single ladies, single men, dads might have the time to take away from family. But I bet any mother can handle difficult situations where somebody's yelling at you because you are the face of the company or event way better than any of you know people that don't have kids and experience well, trying to understand another person's view it should be taught at elementary school <laughs> and maybe and I, this. I think why we take it is because we truly care and want that person to their problem to be resolved yeah. like right as a mom we want to try to keep everybody happy and I don't know, that's me and that and that's probably my downfall too. But I think that's where my heart is. And so I'm gonna make sure, you know, somebody else, I don't wanna diss on anybody, but I was probably the right person for her to yell at, actually, because I am gonna take care of it. Yeah. She could have yelled at guys out there and they'd be like, I got eighty five thousand fences to put up today, lady. I don't care that yeah. you are you know. So yeah. I cared and we helped her a little bit, but I think so, there's a lot of wisdom in it though. Like, I don't think that my reaction as race, like, oh my goodness, would I be a different race director right now? <laughs> yes. Like <laughs> I did, I was not, what I have learned as a mom, like to, to your point, there's a couple of things I want to say, like, there's a lot of acknowledgement here that I think is really valuable to listen to, like to, to hear the acknowledgement of your skill set. So Jamaica, like totally nailed it. Like, the skill sets that you're learning as a mom enable you to do, you you can realize that you are the face. Like, I love it that you, you know, we wear these shirts called mom or we wore this shirt called race director or we wear these shirts. Like, what is that shirt that that person is coming at you? Because that's what you're representing. At, that's all they see right now. And just to acknowledge that is super cool um, as our skills. Like, Absolutely. And that's just one of the things, I, I mean, you mentioned so many other things, Jamaica, like there, that's just one thing that um, is so powerful to see what we do. I was so lucky to follow Jamaica around at the 70.3 Iron My World Champs 2022 uh, after my race. And oh my goodness, she just keeps her cool. And it's like, 
I got to be there at this time, dropping off some sandwiches that I have to go pick up from there. And then I have to take care of these volunteers. They haven't eaten all day. So I need to, <laughs> and it was just like, she was so cool and collected the whole time. I saw you got really tired at the end. Um, and I finished line to catch Mariana. <laughs> <laughs> And she was, when I, when I crossed that finish line, she was there with the medal and I was just so happy to see her because like, you know, like we connected so well. Uh, so I don't even understand how you did it all, but I want to ask you, how do you keep your shit together when, when you like, what are you telling yourself when you just are on the words of meltdown? I'm 80, get off on it. <laughs> Sorry, like, I have ADD and I just I kind of just get off on it like oh my gosh like things are out of control this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny I saw, <laughs> I saw a quote one day I can't remember exactly what it said but it was like oh everything's peaceful and fine I I don't know what to do with myself I feel so awkward and then you know there's a shit storm and yes let's go this is awesome like this is what I was made for so I don't know that's just it's the way I'm wired <laughs> but I love it I love connecting those world championships we had three world championships in 19 months and I mean I almost fell into a little bit of depression afterwards because it was such a high for me mm -hmm. and it was so and I feel so blessed to have been like right in the middle of all the administration for it and I knew everything and that was just so fun for me to be a part of and go on that ride that's uh that's very typical of a high achiever who has gone through highlight of their career big race and then they fall into the nothing and I think uh you know a lot of the depression comes afterwards because we don't celebrate what we've just yeah. done. So I think, you know, when life gives you those lemons, right? In that point, I have to make lemonade out of it. So now I have a group me with about, well, I think we have like 130 women and it's all pickleball. Oh, <laughs> we, um, another girl has, she's started a, like a private league or excuse me, a club. Um, and we have a draft and we all, and we have 12 captains and they all draft us onto the teams. I was a captain last season. It was great. And so I feel like I've, I've, you have to find something. And for me, it's sports. It's always been sports and, and I'm having a blast, you know, and it's all with women. It's so empowering. It's so fun to share, you know, people are being new grandmas. People are being new moms. People are getting married. It's super fun. Mm -hmm how do you how do you promote inclusivity in your events tanila you you're working with women are you working do you have, still have male athletes as well or i have they... one i have one, one? yeah <laughs> very secure male uh yeah. yeah but um no i predominantly almost exclusively work with uh, female athletes at this point in time from a, yeah. a variety of ages but predominantly perimenopause and beyond yeah. yeah. And how how do you how do you promote your events? I mean, I guess it, it uh speaks for itself. Uh very menopausal athletes, whoever self-identifies, uh are drawn to your events. Uh but but thinking like before. You know, this isn't I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this probably differently than I know that we're they're talking about like sporting events, but mm -hmm. what I really wish would happen is that um, we wouldn't have to actually have, like, I don't want to de de um, detangle. Like, I don't want to have necessarily, like, I know what I'm looking at. And it was like my athletes that were at the world championships and um, Kona loved having the female only event. Like they really got there. It was it was theirs. They loved it. It was empowering and it was energizing. And there was, you know, we really talked about that within my team um, and what that was like. And so that's awesome. And I like, whenever I'm listening to businesses or podcasts or whatever, I just, 
what I want is that we can be part of, and we don't have to be taken out of, Mm -hmm. we can stand together and still acknowledge the differences. Um, We can be celebrated alongside equally. I, Mm -hmm. because I love working with men. I love being, having, you know, like I love that dynamic that we can all be inclusive and have, I think we're better together. I do get tired of the situations that we're not cued into. Like I think what Jamaica said a little earlier, and maybe she can talk a bit more about that. Like with the race is better with that perspective. It's better when we have the diversity coming together. We better when we understand that females are not small men. It is better when we understand that moms have a different stress than others. Um, If we can see people just as they are, like, I don't know if this makes sense, but that's how events should be. That's how we all like everything should be in in my mind. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. I agree. I I really enjoyed, we had the two day event here um, for the 70.3 world championship. And I, I totally get what you're saying. I loved the women's event, but I think I saw it. I saw it from a standpoint of good. Somebody else is taking, I mean, there was a lot of people who came as partners, you know, the men would their races the next day. And so it was so fun to see the guys just having the time to support the women and what they were doing. That's and cool. It was way awesome. <laughs> Not to mention they were really hot and they were standing on the sideline with their shirts off. But <laughs> <laughs> it was fun just to see them out literally cheerleading and giving the women their day, you know? I mean, yeah. because the in and yeah, they're so fast. They're so whatever yeah. that they just blow by the women. And so, uh, yeah, they're just left in the shadows when they're when they actually race together. But what was really fun that, that time for me that stands out was then the award ceremony was all together and to see them all together as champions um in their own right and how eloquent the women spoke better than the men was great too but it was fun just to see it all come together in the end like yeah they could be separate days and it just added to it I liked it mm-hmm. now but I love the fact that they're like mm-hmm. moving one these and so that's a whole different category but (laughs) yeah I I don't I don't have the experience of women only uh weekend because I I've only done one world champs and that was uh when the women were first and men after the day after but I the energy on the start line I remember we were all in our wetsuits and dancing and smiling and you looked around to your fellow competitors and they are you know shaking their booty and you know waving their hands and uh, just the energy was so intense happy joyful and I'm sorry guys but I don't see that on any regular Ironman event start line when I am the only one smiling, being excited, and there's pictures to prove this. And everybody else, guys are just like super serious. And oh, I'm gonna go kill this. <laughs> you know, I I love that day. I love the women only day. But it, it yep. was it was the guys turn the day after. So I don't know how it, it will be in hopefully Kona 2023 five. You know, what's so interesting about what you're saying is, and I can just, I can feel the energy coming from it. And we have this, um, I was listening to one of the coaching modules um, at Fast Talk Labs. And I I forgot the the woman's name who was talking about it. She was talking about um, this, we're better together. Like we're better mm-hmm. to bring each other's performance up. And, um, and I think that there's, you know, when you look at the the research and you're looking at, okay, what is motivating women uh, in sport? And this is more for the, as not necessarily um, the, the high performance or the elite, although this may still be true, but let's just talk about general recreational ac- 
uh, amateur athletes. And what is motivating is a lot of that social connection and competitiveness is a factor for sure, but it's um, not as important as the connection component. Um, that's at least what the research is saying. So then what we do is we, if we're all together, um, that competitive, that that tension with the male athletes, I wonder if we kind of just kind of, kind of shrink, into that because it's Mm. so dominating and and that's where I remember as an athlete too like you Mario was like where's everybody having fun and it's what my athletes say it's like it's so intimidating like where (laughs) why are we not having like what is this about you know and maybe there is that just slightly different energy that's coming out there that we get to kind of tease out and remember as women like what we we are connectors. We are yeah. you know, the glue. We are glue. Like this is this is so much of our just what we do. We don't even try. And that can really just like lift up and and mm-hmm. have that sense of we're better together moving forward rather than that comparative, um, which is gonna happen anyway, but that comparative kind of piece around it um that becomes even more. potentially tense I think it's a Mm -hmm. fascinating thing that you guys are talking about I never had that experience um so what is it going to take to be able to keep the female energy and bring it to a a mixed event like so I want to say two things first of all I want to say that I was on the dock both of those mornings and I watched the girls like jumping all these little people who look the same because they're all in their swim caps and and uh, wetsuits but it was so fun and stark contrast to the next morning when the men were standing there serious I was imagining running of the bulls and the bulls I mean the testosterone was palpable mm. they're slapping their legs and they it's cold and they're breathing out I mean it was such a stark difference that I it made an impression on me um and when you ask what is it gonna take um to keep that energy and integrate it I think as women we just have to show up and I realized we have to other things to do right we have to show up for a lot of things but we have to show up there was a comedian that said something about um what has failed women's professional basketball and he said it's women because if we want it to succeed we have we have to show up we have to be in the stands we have to we have to be there like if yeah. we want these to show up yeah yeah show up and and claim our space and claim our own energy and not let that our energy to be dampened by intense energy that competitive males yeah. can ooze and if we show up and we're singing and dancing, others are going to join in. Totally. I mean, yeah. And it's good it's- for them too. Like, could you imagine being on that? Like guys are no, they're not immune to that, you know, rise of that intense, t- like testosterone. They too are there for fun. They yeah. Too yeah. are doing like, it's not like most of them are not going to the Olympics anytime soon. Right. Like, come on people. This is really <laughs> fun. Yes. Like. I, I love what you're saying, Jamaica and, and Mariana. Like, I think that it's, um, uh, yeah, it's super cool to bring and show up fully in yourself and to be confident in that, period. Mm-hmm. And as mom, as female, as competitor, as I'm going to bring up, like, I am going to raise my ass off. I want you to, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It- it was so beautiful to to be racing because we had that beautiful start. It was super cold, but the dancing at the the start line, like when does that happen? But also on the bike, like people were coming, like giving compliments on your outfit and your bike. And I felt I was I was riding really slow uphill. These incredible women, I was just in awe. They were just, you know riding the hills that felt like never ending so fast and I'm like I'm cheering for them they are cheering for me and then the brutal brutal run 
we were having so much fun, you know, like there was booty shakes and there was like people were cheering and laughing and like we were, you know, commenting on how hard this 5k hill is that we have to go up, you know, twice. It was amazing. It's such Mariana, a beautiful experience. Do you do you think that some of that fun was because the guys weren't there? So like I don't know if, if it was because guys weren't there because I, I don't have anything else to compare regular race is not that much fun. Like it's not as support. Maybe it's because it was the world championship and you had all arrived, right? Like you'd all yeah. made it and it's yeah. all celebrated other thing here maybe yeah maybe but um, i i was i was also there in the mindset that i'm just gonna enjoy the day and maybe yeah. that's why i saw all that and kind of like absorbed the energy i think i would have showed up differently if i was there to win i i think for my own competitive uh i know myself when i'm in the competitive headspace uh i probably am not as Cool fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's really true. I think it really, I, I think again, coming to what Jamaica, like such an important point, show off exactly as you are and ready mm -hmm. to do what you're doing. Like I think as a professional athlete on that start line, it was my job. I mm -hmm. had requirements by my sponsors. I wasn't there. Like, and that was actually part of my problem. That was part of the problem of why one of the the challenges that I really had to grapple with is it wasn't fun anymore mm -hmm. and you race better when you're having fun in, and enjoy absolutely and so like so I guess I'm kind of going to go on that I'm going to do flip like is that a good thing that we get into that kind of mindset of like I was in the mindset of being competitive and wanting to do this well when is it that you know what is the mastery of excellence like mm -hmm. when is it what is excellence it's to me, excellence is being able to have this deep curiosity, but not losing the sense of, you know, what it is that we're doing at the, at the essence of it. And that's to be our best, to show up fully, to have those details worked out, to um, celebrate other people like that is excellence because you're not, it's not about, especially in the, in the sport of triathlon, as we're speaking to, it's actually not about anybody else. Like, so, yeah, it, there is like, you know, you hope that there's no drafting. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you hope that there's nobody else because that's part of the rules. Sometimes it doesn't work out so well, but you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I totally, I'm with you in it. And I remember you asked me when you were my coach, uh, you asked me, Mariana, can you explain to me what does excellence mean to you or greatness? And I, I struggled to answer it. I really did, but I think like my, I took a full circle going to the worlds and what I thought, like I experienced some feelings that I never thought I would, but it was, it was becoming a full circle, closing in the circle and realizing that this is a spiritual journey for me. And to me, kind of like excellence means to be allowing my journey to evolve without me trying to push it so hard and letting myself become who I am showing up who I am and just enjoying and finding that joy in the movement and in the pursuit that I, I am I am so keen on doing which is you know finding out how good I can be in triathlon so it's just really just like this uh, falling back on this spiritual journey, really. So that's excellence to me right now. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. That's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, have you noticed um, as a mom, you know, the, the mundane task that we have, like, never ending list I have a pile of clothes waiting for me to fold them you know in all morning 
uh when when we're doing just that you know when we're just in the motherhood mode and taking care of you know 100 things i found i don't know uh have you ever felt this way but i find like when i have something else that i'm doing like this project women in sports speaking to incredible women i uh, i'm busy but uh, it's such a like it has flipped my like mindset totally about the the laundry that is waiting. Now I'm actually like, oh, that's not too bad. I'll fold them <laughs> because I have had my own project that I'm passionate about. So that that laundry ball that is typically something negative that I have to do. Now I'm just like, oh, I don't care. I'll do it. Have Have you noticed anything like that when when you're busy and your least favorite thing, uh, being a mom, you kind of Flip the mindset a little bit. I hear you. Yeah. Totally. And I just know exactly what you're talking about. When I don't have a project going or, you know, like an event coming up or whatever, I, I'll forget stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll like, oh, shoot, I was supposed to take the kids to ortho today or whatever it is, you know? And I'm like, who, who is that? Who is, I don't forget things, you yeah. know? So, um, you know, it's kind of, if you want something done, ask the busiest person, you know, and yeah, I totally get that. Like, I don't mind doing the laundry. It's part of like, it gets me to the next thing. Like, let's hurry, let's get the laundry done so that we can go do something else. Yeah. I, I, I think, get it. Yeah. I think for me, it's, um, I just have to, I just release so much. <laughs> like it's just a constant release because I can't honestly keep up. Like there's no way that I'm, I would be able to build my business and be the, be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like trying to, there's, there is, there is zero perfection in my home nothing. Like I, I'm bad at printing photos. Like, like I'm just thinking about all the things that, you know, I see in other people's homes, like, like looking at that comparison, I'm just like, I am not that mom, but I can do a lot of things. And my kids have you know, this is what I can do. This is where I put my priorities and laundry is definitely, it will get done. It just might take four days, like literally four days. Like yeah. it might go from one basket to another basket to the basket in the room. So it's actually getting to closer to the place that it needs to be put away. And that's okay. Because like, I don't care. Like I, I can't, I've got too many other things that I'm excited about. And, and, I just like in the, the list of priorities, like I hear you. I hear you. It used to take me like days too, but now when we move to Texas and kids are bigger, I'm like, why am I doing this? So oh, yeah. I dump the basket on the couch and I call in a family meeting. I'm like, okay, Owen, you sort the laundry, put them in piles, everybody find their own piles, fold them and put them away. I'm a freaking genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, at our home, we, um, it's, oh, everything is a, go a game still for us. Mm. It's like, who can find the matching socks? That was the, the game last night. It's like, who can find the most matching socks? It, there is a lot of competition that I apparently have <laughs> at home. I'm just like, oh, that's why they're so competitive. Um, mm. But like, yeah, there's a lot of, my kids they are only you know four and six but boy they're they're stepping up right now because there's there's no other way mm -hmm. to have business to have big dreams about what what I can do for female athletes and yeah and and also have a strong like to have fun with my race team and to connect with my my friends and my husband heck maybe even him once in a while yeah <laughs> so true yeah hey uh beautiful amazing just badass women Tanil and Jamaica I thank you so much for taking time and chatting about you know organizing events and being a mom sharing laundry tips <laughs> <laughs> um thank you so much um where can people find you or your favorite cause on social media you can find me at tenilhoodland.com. Awesome. Jamaica. Pickleball um, champion. I'm just Jamaican St. George. Awesome. On, uh, 
on Instagram or Gmail. So I will I will link those under the video. And uh, yeah, thank you again. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed this conversation with you. Thank you. Okay.